this is really an exclusive for us, Gene, because you, you don't run around to be interviewed because you must have some strange uh, uh, hang-ups or something. You're, are you leading a very mysterious life that we shouldn't ask about? Or why don't you allow yourself to be interviewed? I'm leading a very mysterious life, <laughs> which you should ask about. Okay. Which you can ask about. Why, oh... Do you live in a house? Yes, I do live in a house. Do you have a cook? No. You cook? Yes. Do you live in the house alone? Um, yes. On occasion, is there anybody else there? Yes. And is she pretty? Yes. But you don't choose to live You didn't in... ask anything about bigger than a bread box? Oh, no, 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 no. Should I? Well, I don't want to shock anyone. Uh, I know, I don't mind shocking, but I do think that in to my way of thinking, it's sacrilegious to get married because I respect marriage so much, right. unless you have lived with someone. Because it's too easy, come and go, marriage, divorce, marriage, divorce. I don't, and I have been married, and I have been divorced. And now, before I would get married again, I would want to know an awful lot about that person. But I would want that person to know an awful lot about me. That's good. Because you... when you're honeymooning, when you're romancing the first uh, few weeks, the first few months, that's not the way it is after mm. two mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. you know. well, Gene, talk about your uh, mother. She was really instrumental in your life and sent you on a long journey from Milwaukee, your first time to the West Coast, didn't she? Oh. So, Yes. To or maybe you don't want to talk no, no, about no, that experience. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you anything that, uh, that you want to know. I, I believe in talking. There's no point in doing a show like this unless you're going to talk about personal things. Okay. Uh, private is something else. I make a big distinction. What's the difference between? Personal is what's the closest things to my heart, what matters to me, what do I feel strongly about. Private are names, addresses, telephone numbers, what color hair, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But personal, I'll answer anything that you want. But my mother, my mother um, got a heart attack when I was six years old, and the doctor told us that we should try to keep her happy and not get her too excited, and uh, because she could die just like that. So it was just my sister, um, my uh, father and me, and I think at that point in my life, I think if someone were reading my palm, they would probably look back and see a sharp curve off. I don't know why, I don't know what insanities take place in the minds of comic actors, of comedians, of artists in general, but whatever it was stirring inside me, it got veered off towards trying to make her laugh. That's how I dealt with the pain I was feeling of not being able to fix her cracked heart. It, she had a cracked and enlarged heart. What can I do? I was six years old, so I tried to make her laugh. And I did Danny Kaye routines and then later on Sid Caesar routines and Would so Would she laugh? She, her, her criterion for, my criterion for what was really going over big is if she had, I don't know if you can say this on TV, I'll take a chance. Okay. If she peed in her pants, if a little pee pee came, I knew that I was going over big. Right. And she would laugh so much then she'd, she'd say, Jerry, because that was my name in those yeah. days. Now look what you've made me do, and she'd run off to the oh, bathroom. That but I, that was the same as when the audience goes like that. I knew with my mama peeping that that was, I must be on the right track Now, somewhere. do you judge, do you use that as your criteria today? Well, it's funny, because we make jokes about that. And, you know, uh, when Mel and I are talking, Mel Brooks and I are talking about things, it, it's not, we don't want funny. We want pee in your pants laughter. But I, I'll bet you it comes in his mind, too, back to the same origin. Well, with me, it was literally. Uh, this is a clean show. I, I'm not trying to, you no, know. That's all right, but, but you're it, telling it, it with great love and affection. It's now you're not telling us it a dirty joke. It, you have little philosophies? Yes. That you impart to I you? have, um, I, as a matter of fact, I do. One of them is, um, be very careful, be very careful what you want, because you might get it. And I really believe in that a lot. Well, I you go, love you, that. Well, you think all the time, if only I had... And then you say, what, money? Is that it? Mm -hmm. If only I were a movie star. If only I could get that girl. If only I could live in that house. You should be very careful what things you set your heart on, uh, meaning if you had that, then happiness would come. Well, you may get that and find that that's not where the happiness lies. I love that. Say it once again. Be very careful of what you want because you might get it. It is absolutely charming. I think 
This I only discovered recently, um, fairly recently, to my great surprise. I always thought that everything I was doing in acting came from my mother. I realized that probably the inclination to go into acting somewhere in the arts came from my mother, but what I'm like on screen, the, the, the kind of characters I play, what my talent is based on, is probably 90% my father, because he was the most naive man, a real victim in life, the most innocent person that I've ever met. And, uh, and I think that's what the audiences respond to when they see me in a, in a crazy situation where the forces of evil are coming down on me and how will I ever get out? It's that, I think it's that naivete of my father that I call on. Although I wasn't doing it consciously, but I think it affected me more than I had ever dreamed. I know that the thing that was burning in my heart was when, I, when they said, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, at that time, I said, I want to be a comedian. They said, well, let's see you do something funny. I said, but I don't do it that way. I, I'll, I do it on a stage with people. And uh, what I meant was I wanted to be an actor and be funny like that. I was taking dramatic art in Milwaukee at the time, so I'd had a fair amount of experience, even at 13. And I made a bet with one of the boys. I hope that he's listening. We bet, I don't know what, a dollar or $10 or a, a couple of sticks of bubble gum, which used to cost a dollar a piece at the time, because yeah. it was all being sent overseas. I made a, a bet with him about who was going to become a professional actor or comedian first, him or me. Well, I, ma I won. I made it. <laughs> and I want to collect. But, I, but maybe he did too. Oh, maybe you know. he's Clint Eastwood. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember his name. But in those days, I saw, I didn't see, I heard Danny Kay on an album. That I think uh, uh, Sylvia Fine wrote most of his songs. And I said, what is that? What am I listening? They said, that is a comedian. I said, oh, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And then I saw Sid Caesar on your show of shows. I said, well, what is that? They said, that's a comedian. I said, yes, that's, that's what I want to be. And then I saw Lee J. Cobb in Death of a Salesman. Oh, Lord. And I, I, I was about 15 and 14 or 15. And I said, what's that? And they said, that's an actor. I said, oh, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And that has to do with what you were asking me at the begin beginning about interview shows and audiences. Uh, I like the craziness to come out when I'm in front of a camera, uh, in a part, in a play, in a movie, and then it can come out. But for us to talk like this, if there's a huge audience out there, it's not quite the same thing because they say, well, he's so funny in the movies, why not get up and do some of your routines? But you do, lecture, but you do lectures in front of all those I only, I only, a I only answer questions. I say, I'm, I, I'm too shy or too embarrassed to just start lecturing to you. Anything you want to know that I can help you, the more personal, the better. Ask me, and I'll tell you whatever I know about it. Is there a part of you in every picture you do? I hope so. I hope. Do you know Gene Wilder very well? I mean, do you know that man? I know him a lot better now than I used to. Um, I, uh, I was uh, Jerry Silverman, and I think I wanted to be someone else, not that guy. And when I uh, had to choose a name, when I got into the actor's studio and got my first part um, in off-Broadway production, I had to choose a name overnight, and I chose Gene Wilder, but I think... What was wrong with Silverman? I didn't you, I, you didn't like him? No, I couldn't picture uh, Jerry Silverman in Hamlet. It didn't have a good ring to it. There was something wrong somewhere. It's like Beverly Sills in opera. What was her name? Bubble Silverman. Really? Yeah. Silverman? And Bubble, Bubble Silverman, sure. And then the great uh, tenor in opera. Um, you see uh, Pearlman? No, no, Jan Pierce was Pinky oh. per Perlman. Pinky Perlman. He was a violinist. Pinky Perlman? Yeah. So Pinky Perlman and Bubble Silverman could have done a great opera together. Yes. Right? <laughs> but I don't know if it would have drawn. This has been a remarkable uh, opportunity to sit down and talk with you. I've wanted to do it for a long time. And I understand your anxieties. And. Uh, I, st I just want to make one comment. Had this hall been jammed with our usual 6,000, mm -hmm. they would have screamed and they would have loved. But I, I understand your request. Well, but I would have had diarrhea beforehand. <laughs> That's the only problem. <laughs> That's the amazing part about performing artists. They, they say all the time how nervous they are, uh, uh, how shy and please don't make me whatever. And then the other half of them is saying, look at me. Watch me. Don't look at him. Don't look at her. Just me. And that's a dichotomy that's awfully difficult to understand. Right, right. The next time we'll be together and, and uh, with a chance to talk, we'll be uh, in competition. 
at our uh, Tennis in Venice shows from uh, Venice, Italy. Thank you very much, Gene Wilder. Thank you for doing it this way. All right. We'll be right back after this message. I saved a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs>